see if I can use this one. Um, So, first of all, I'm Christina Hartman, and I'm running for U.S. Congress here, right here, in Pennsylvania's 16th District. And I'm so pleased to be with you this evening. Um, I think it was, was it January or February when you had Brian Sims and Judy and a whole lineup of folks here. And man, this room was electric. And you highlighted all the things that you did, Jane, um, that this group has done over those past six months, and what an incredible, incredible accomplishment. So let's give yourselves a round of applause, because you're fantastic. <laughs> it is thanks to so many people sitting in this room um, who've been working hard over the past six months, and a number of you who've been working hard over the past countless decades, fighting to make sure um, that Democrats get elected into office, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, so, as many of you probably already know, um, but I'll start from the beginning for those of you who don't, I'm from Lancaster. I grew up in a place called Manning Township, which is a suburb of Lancaster City. And I went on to the George Washington University and to Fordham University for my two degrees. Those are in international affairs with an emphasis in economics. And then I spent the better part of my 20, almost 20 year career advocating and negotiating for human rights all over the world. So I've worked everywhere from Afghanistan to South Sudan and everywhere in between. Um, here at home, I've supported survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse. Um, in Washington, I, I took what we did on the ground, either in the field or with you know, survivors, sexual assault and took those voices to Washington and advocated for changes to both our national and foreign policy. And the frustration that so many of us felt the day after the election last year is actually the feeling that I've been having since November of 2011 when the Jerry Sandusky case broke. You may remember that month, for me, I was sitting in South Korea actually. that in this day and age, in my home state, that these terrible things can still be happening. And that's when I switched my focus from, from international to domestic. But what I know from working on Capitol Hill for so long is that until we get people like us on the inside, only then are we gonna start to see the changes that we wanna see. So some of you already know that story about me because you were here last time in 2016, when we did the unthinkable. We took what was considered a safe Republican seat and made it into a horse race, a toss-up. No one could actually believe that we became one of the top 30 races in the nation. We raised $1.25 million in a district where nobody had ever given us a second thought. And we did that because of all of you. So thank you. Um, and here we are. So we built that thanks to the support of so many, and we're going to keep building. So we're building off the momentum of my run from 2016, but also the energy that uh, groups like Indivisible Works have created. And we're working hard and have been since the day after the day after the election, <laughs> because we took the day after to grieve. Um, but we've been working hard ever since then to make sure that we're going to deliver for the people of the 16th district and finish the job that we started. You will find it unsurprising that I'm not the kind of person who likes to leave a job unfinished. Um, so we're focused on a few issues this cycle. Um, they're very similar to the ones we were focused on last time because it turns out they're the ones that matter to people most. And those of you who went door to door for me or helped out in Um, or have helped out over the past few months know that it's a core 
enforce the Affordable Care Act, defending, improving, and expanding um, our health care coverage in this country. We're looking to make sure, um, as the gentleman from the 15th said, that we are providing folks with the skills and education that they need to get good jobs. Um, because we know that when people have good jobs, they thrive. But that's not just you know, going to college. It could be apprenticeships um, and those types of programs. Again, those are ones that we were working um, to promote last time through Danny Stevens College, the Red Area Community College, and all sort of these sectors that you know very well. And I'm really happy to um, be working with the AFL-CIO as they launch uh, their manufacturing apprenticeship program. So we'll be working closely with them and hopefully that will benefit um, Palmer uh, Chocolate here in the Reading area as well as the Pepperidge Farm Manufacturing Plant down in Lancaster and many others. Um, and then we'll of course be focused on my opponent's horrible record. You may have noticed he voted to repeal the Affordable Care Act. You may have noticed that he's refusing again and again to hold a town hall. Um, and he, quite frankly, is just not doing a very good job of keeping his own finances in order. And I can tell you, I wouldn't, have been, wouldn't want him in charge of my taxpayer dollars. So those are the things we're going to be focused on this, uh, this cycle. And I look forward to um, having you follow along with our journey, participate in the process. If you did last time, we invite you to join us again. If you didn't, we invite you now. Um, we're on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere you can think of. We're asking for a card uh, tonight, but be happy to take any questions that you